Hi everyone, my name is Katrina. I'm a first year student here at uh, USC and I have Ms. Uh, Dia Kila here with me. Can I ask, answer some questions about the EPA profession, her journey, and some exclusive pre-PA tips at the end. So Ms. D, what's your day-to-day -day life as the director of the program? Thank you again, Katrina. That's a great question. Um, my day-to-day, -day, it depends on the day. It may start off with teaching a course. It may start off with a program or department meeting with, with leadership on how best we can support and continue having support for our program. Um, it may be a one-on-one -on -one student meeting that I have with either an advisee or um, other student leadership. And so one thing that I continue to make sure that I carve out in my day is having the time for students. Um, I have an open door policy. I have program director hours every week for two hours so that students feel that they can come and come in and talk about any any issues or feedback that they may have for the program. Um, so also my day um, encompasses a lot of emails and um, other, other meetings that may come throughout. Um, so those administrative tasks are always part of my day, but ensuring that I have time for teaching, that I have time for our students is most important. Thank you so much for that uh, response. I think you've been very available with the students. So it's been really helpful throughout my journey as a first year student. So. Um, what are some challenges or some rewarding moments in your career as a PA? I have been a PA for 22 years, and um, I have seen our profession grow so much in the time that I've been a practicing PA from having a very um, limited delegation of services agreement with a um, formulary and having to have co-signatures on every aspect of our practice to now having a practice agreement where the practice and the team can really decide how best to collaborate as part of that team with the PA. I have seen so much growth in our profession and, and continue to see where our profession is going to be going in the future. Um, some unique challenges that I've seen with our profession is how best to work to the highest potential of our career and um, you know having optimal team practice is something that's a vision of our profession on how can we continue to work collaboratively with the healthcare team to provide the best practice for our patients but with that said how can we truly work to our fullest potential especially Katrina in areas where there is the greatest need so those areas are marginalized communities underserved communities rural areas where there may not be that access to healthcare like in other areas. So how can we as PAs provide that, you know, that key for care, really minimize that gap, and it's really having that optimal team practice so that we can work to the fullest of our potential. So those are some challenges we continue to have as a profession. Now, has our profession made some steps to get closer to optimal team practice? Absolutely, um, but we still have some ways to go. Um, rewards has always been, in my eyes, that patient care and having the patient at the center of that care. And I have always worked as part of a um, team in a hospital setting, working in pediatrics and inpatient pediatrics. It was always a multidisciplinary team that took care of that patient. So from the physician I worked closely with, with the nursing staff, with the pharmacist that was on staff down the hallway that I'd always ask about the medication reconciliation uh, for that patient, with the physical therapies and, and the occupational therapist that would always work, the social worker and the discharge planning that's needed to ensure that the care that you're providing for that patient in the hospital and the family would continue once they were discharged. That team approach is needed for all care of our patients. And that was the biggest reward is being part of this team as a PA. I felt like I was able to always give that extra step, like that extra care, especially with patient education, when they were being discharged, ensured that the plan that we were setting out for that patient and their family would be followed. And um, it was fully explained and they had the resources that they needed to make sure that they could take care of um, that patient. And so that took, that's, takes a lot of effort, but I was happy to be part of that and be part of that solution. So um, 
being a PA has been definitely rewarding and sometimes challenging, but I would never, never do anything else. I look back 22 years ago when I decided to become a PA, you know, actually more than that, maybe 26 years ago when I decided that this was a career path for me. And um, I look back and I would never change, I wouldn't change a thing. Thank you so much for that response. I'm really excited to be able to work in a team and work with other professionals. And I think USC has really um, honed in on the multidisciplinary aspect of it. Um, we just learned about, you know, different professions and social work. So um, I like that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. I did have a question. Um, so for a prospective applicant, what would you say uh, stands out and what makes them, how do you know they're ready to be part of that process? So that's a great question, Katrina, especially thinking about those who are interested in our profession and how best to be prepared to enter our profession and enter a PA program. I always look at applications as for at least our program, you know, do does that application speak to our mission? We at our program, as you know, you know, we're a primary care program and we from from the start of the program, it's all about our mission. From the students that we are selecting to throughout its, our curriculum, to our clinical placements, to really looking at the entry-level PA that we want to graduate from our program, it's all about our mission, really giving back to our marginalized and underserved communities. So in the application, when you're looking at a personal statement, you know, share with us what is that story that shows us, highlights to us, that you understand what it means to provide primary care, what it means to really be that solution in the future of mitigating any of those healthcare gaps that exist, and what does that mean to give back to our communities, our marginalized, rural, underserved communities. With that said, it's not only those words on the application, but what is your lived experience? And so what does that mean? Clinical experience. Not only the number of hours that an applicant has, where are they doing those clinical experiences at? Is it in an area that shows us that they're committed to underserved communities? Is it in an area, a discipline that is part of primary care? Or can they, at least perhaps in their personal statement, show the connection between where they did their clinical hours and their, their clinical experience to primary care to that, you know, serving the underserved or marginalized communities. So that's one thing. And then the volunteer experience. So not only clinical ex hours, but for volunteer experience, where is that applicant doing that volunteer experience? Are they demonstrating to us that they have that commitment, that passion? Because that's what we're looking for when you're a student of our program. And I think that it really does show. Our, our students, when they start our program, yes, you need to be prepared for that rigorous study. Yes, we take into your academics um, into the equation and ensuring letters of recommendation are, are recommending you to start the program. But when our students start the program, they can handle the rigor, but they have that heart for service. And they're part of our Pathways program. They're part of our Trojan Trainer programs. They're doing the health fairs. They're participating in ways to, again, continue to show our passion for primary care and for our underserved and marginalized communities. And then that carries in throughout, throughout the program in didactics and the clinical rotations in the last semester before they're ready to graduate. And I think at the end of the day, that makes our graduates different because not only is it in the service that they have throughout the program, but it's also intertwined in our curriculum and our students know how important it is to be patient-centered, be culturally hum, hum, have that cultural humility, and to really embrace the diversity of our patients and give back to our communities. How would you know a student is prepared? Like an interview, during the interview, you'd be able to tell they're genuine, or when you have a conversation about them, would that be the center of like a decision maker, or just like an overall? Like, they have to get to the interview, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to highlight that in what they're writing and submitting. So it's both in the CASPA application with their personal statement, but also that supplemental I think is most important because the supplemental for our program asks specifically questions about why USC 
you know, how are you aligned to our mission? So we weigh those heavily as we're reading through to say, you know, does this person match what we're looking for to then get the interview? And then during the interview, it's all blinded. So then it's, again, another opportunity for the applicant to really highlight what they're passionate about and getting that message across. Uh, I just wanted to say congratulations to those who've gotten interviews and to those who are applying. Keep going. You've got this. And to those who are in the program, like myself, and just PAs in the profession, we just wanted to say fight on. Fight on.